Hello all, my name is Krishnag and welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, we'll be discussing about automated machine learning with Python. Now, which is, it is also called as AutoML. Now, this particular library, like many of the people were basically asking in my comment section, like, please discuss about AutoML if you can. And yes, I will do that. Apart from that, I'll also make tutorials with respect to AutoML in the future classes, where you can see that how I can use AutoML libraries to basically develop a state of art algorithms uh, and give you better accuracy in short. Now, remember guys, uh, in a data science lifecycle project, right, you have various process like data, uh, I mean, first of all, data gathering, then data pre-processing, where you do feature engineering, feature selection, then you select the model, and then you basically fine tune your model, and then after that, you deploy your model, right? This, these are the basic life cycles of a data science project. Now, now this, if I just talk about automated machine learning in Python, we are not automating this whole life cycle, but instead, two important parts that is selecting the right kind of model and hyper tuning of the particular model this both can be automated with the help of auto ml solution now remember guys for selecting the right kind of model and for hyper tuning we know that we need to have an in-depth knowledge of machine learning uh, algorithms we need to have in-depth knowledge of all the parameters that are basically used and i'm telling in terms of getting a state of art algorithm okay so we need to have a lot of things uh, and many companies will not have that particular uh, so many resources they will have domain expert people but uh, with respect to this machine learning algorithms and the parameters that are, they are used they may not have many expertise so for them they can basically use this auto ml solution because this auto ml solutions in machine learning and deep learning will help you to select the right kind of model and it will help you to uh, hyper tune the model also now the question arises that uh, you may be probably asking, Krish, this is pretty much simple, right? Then why we need to learn machine learning from scratch? <laughs> Guys, always remember that uh, you have to learn machine learning and deep learning. Then only you'll be able to understand how auto ML basically works. But most of the tasks like your model creation, I mean, your model selection, model creation and hyper tuning will be taken care of this. But you should know that for how much time you have to run this particular model, how you have to run this particular model. So there are some things that you need to have the knowledge for this. Yes, for some people who are domain experty, who, who, who don't have that much knowledge about the algorithms that are basically used they can basically use this okay and for them only but for all the other people please make sure you learn machine learning deep learning and then go to auto ml now in one, one of my previous video i've also discussed about h2o.ai if uh, again the link will be basically given in the description that is also a type of auto ml solution where uh, and the main aim is to provide accessibility to everyone. So it is provided as an auto, uh, open source. So auto ML, most of the solutions that are available in the market is also provided as an open source. Only one auto ML solution, which is like Google auto ML, uh, that, uh, you know, there, there are some charges with respect to Google auto ML because probably they have created a state of art algorithm for that purpose. Uh, they are basically charging for that. Okay. Now, uh, if I just talk about auto ML concepts, so what are the different concepts that are basically used? So one concept is basically neural network architecture search. Okay. Now understand guys, if you are planning to implement a deep learning model, right? And I probably think you have faced this kind of problems where you need to understand that how many hidden layers needs to be used, how many number of neurons needs to be used, right? So this uh, hidden, uh, I mean the neural architecture search, what it does is that it internally applies a reinforcement learning. That basically means that whenever the model gives bad accuracy, uh, it will basically penalize that particular model. Otherwise, it will reward that particular model for good accuracy. And that is how that particular architecture is basically set up with respect to deep learning. The other part is it also uses transfer learning. So if you don't know about transfer learning, guys, I've created many videos regarding transfer learning. They are very, some very, very good models like VGG16. So if I talk, talk about deep learning, VGG16, ResNet, uh, you know, and apart from that, uh, you have ResNet 50, you have ResNet uh, other versions also. Uh, so all that particular models, right? Uh, it is with respect to some kind of data, they have given a state of art algorithm, state of art results, right? So we can basically reuse that particular model and apply our same, uh, you know, I, I basically use the re reuse the same weights and directly apply to our same data set that we basically have. So transfer learning is also used in auto ML solutions. Now, when I just talk about uh, auto ML solutions in machine learning and deep learning, there are two very important libraries. And I hope you have heard about that particular libraries. One library is basically called as auto Keras. If you want to install auto Keras, you just have to write pip install auto Keras. And uh, the other one is something called as auto SK learn auto skykit learn so pip install SK learn also or auto SK learn also if you do it, it will get installed. Now, 
Uh, auto Keras is basically specifically used for uh, deep learning techniques and Auto SK Learn is specifically used for machine learning techniques. Now again, the thing is that how do we use Auto Keras? That we need to understand, right? Now I'm just uh, reading who uh, invented this Auto Keras and uh, I'm, I'm reading from their official site itself. So Auto Keras is an open source software library for automated machine learning. It is developed by Data Lab at Texas A&M University and community contributors. Okay, the ultimate goal of Auto ML, uh, ML is to provide easy, accessible, deep learning tools to domain expertise. Again, I, I'm, I'm focusing on domain expertise because domain expertise people will not have that particular knowledge with respect to the algorithms and fine tuning parameters and all. And uh, you know, a domain expertise with limited data science or machine learning background. Okay, so uh, what does AutoKeras do, do is that it provides function to automatically search for architecture and hyperparameters of deep learning models. See this. So it is able to find out the own architecture and I'm just reading it from the official site from where they have basically invented AutoKeras. So automatically just understand that you're just given your data automatically the architecture of your deep learning model is created. Trust me guys to find out how many number of hidden layers and how many number of hidden neurons are there we definitely have to try we definitely have to give a lot of iterations of trainings we need to see by changing different different parameters how it looks like and all right so i think autokeras does a very good job and i have also created a video regarding it uh, uh, in my in my machine learning playlist you can have a look onto that now the second library is basically called as auto sk learn now auto sk learn is based on automated machine learning and this is specifically uh, for machine learning algorithms itself okay so this also helps you to select the right kind of algorithms i'll tell you uh, i recently implemented this auto ml just a month back now i was just doing it in my local system now in my local system uh, i had actually installed a I already had all the scale on libraries, right? So this auto scale on what it does, suppose I have a classification problem. I did the feature engineering. I did the feature selection. I just gave it to my model, right? Now this auto scale on what it does is that with respect to this particular data, it will go and try to train every different kind of models, right? Every models like with respect to classification problem, I say logistic regression, decision tree, uh, random forest, XG boost. And based on all those things, right? And it will also hyper parameter, uh, it will uh, hyper parameter, uh, I mean, the hyper parameters will also aut get automatically tuned within that particular model. Okay. So once the hyper parameter is getting tuned, it will also say you that what are the parameters that are basically selected. Now, if I take an example of decision tree, it will tell you that how many number of trees has been selected for that particular decision tree. In case of random forest also it will say uh, in case of logistic regression it will say that what are the l1 parameters l2 parameters and all uh, so all that particular information will basically be given in that and it will automatically hyper parameter tune every parameters in that and after running for some number of iteration then it will basically say you that yes this is the accuracy this is the highest accuracy from this particular model you can use this particular model to solve that particular problem now you may be getting confused how this all things will happen just give me in my next video i'll be showing a practical example by using auto scalar and auto keras and i'll just show you like uh, the uh, like once I start that particular problem, like after data pre-processing, uh, you know, after feature engineering and feature selection, everything will be handled by that auto ML uh, part again. But still, there are some advantages also. There are some disadvantages also about it, guys, which I'll just tell you in a while. Now, the third technique, the third type, one is the auto scale I told you. The other one is auto keras. The third technique is something called as teapot. Now, when I talk about teapot, the teapot full form is the tree based pipeline optimization tool. Okay, so this is one another way of basically automating it. And again, I'll be also showing you an examples in my upcoming videos, like how this particular thing works. Uh, this is based on tree based pipeline optimization that that is a technique altogether. The fourth technique is something called as Google Auto ML. Now, Google Auto ML is not completely for free, guys. Uh, they have actually created a state of art algorithm. It is for paid and you can basically search in the Google and get to know more about Google Auto ML. Uh, now, and uh, I've already discussed about H2O. So H2O.ai, if you have not seen my video, please go and see, see that. And it is again an open source. It is a type of auto ML solutions. Uh, and the main aim is again to include, to provide the knowledge to everyone. Let it be a domain expert person. Let it be a data scientist. Let it be a developer. Let it be anyone. 
okay now the next thing that i want to discuss is what are the advantages and disadvantages of using auto ml now we saw that by using auto ml we don't have to worry about the model uh, selection and model tuning and apart from that uh, i think that part is getting more automated so it will reduce uh, the headache to a data science developer to a machine learning developer deep learning developer with respect to this particular problem statement the disadvantage that i would like to say is that uh, first of all to train this particular model it takes huge amount of time guys it will take i am not sure like if you have a huge data set how much time it will take but it will take definitely a lo large amount of time even though you have very good gpus okay it may be one day two day it may be and based if your data set is small it will take less amount of time but if your data set increases it will take more amount of time and uh, from the official side it is basically given that the auto ml uh, solution that is basically given in the open community right now it is still in development stage okay so they have cautious cautiously told that please do not just use it like this only uh, uh, in short they are basically saying that okay this is in the development stage uh, until the final confirmation uh, just don't use it blindly that is what they are tra basically trying to say because uh, suppose if you are using this in some models uh, uh, and that is live that is basically in the production right so at that time you can you, you should know that uh, if something is live that is basically generating a business right it may be some kind of models that is deployed uh, and it is because of that particular model the a particular organization or company is earning something from that right so they don't want to take that particular risk and uh, google auto ml i can say that uh, yes people can use this again it is a paid version uh, so definitely they have some guarantee like uh, the model will get created very nicely uh, so disadvantages are this too you know it takes more amount of time the second one is that it basically uh you know uh, you should not blindly trust to it and uh, the other question is that you may be probably asking krish why should we learn machine learning deep learning if we have this thing set right the auto ml set it is automating the model creation and model fine-tuning part understand guys it is important that you need to know all the machine learning algorithms all the deep learning algorithms then only you'll be able to learn this auto ml because it will just be like uh, without any knowledge you're just uh, automating something right it'll it'll just not make any sense so it is better that you learn machine learning you learn deep learning and then you go to auto ml so in my upcoming videos what i'll do is that i'll come up with uh, different types of problem statements with the auto ml uh, with the help of auto sk learn auto sky get learn and teapot both three of them three of the techniques i'll show uh, i have already uh, done some practice work uh, but definitely I'll, I'll just record that video and probably till tomorrow day after tomorrow i'll be uh, uploading that so this was all about this particular video i hope you like this particular video please do subscribe to the channel if you are not already subscribed uh, i'm very very much near to 50k subscribers guys please do support it let's let's do it uh, you know again let's share the knowledge to everyone uh, whomever we can um, i'll see you all in the next video have a great day ahead thank you one and all